Greetings, and welcome to Channel Other Doc. I am Jim. I use he, him pronouns, and we are coming to you live from the apocalypse. Uh, this, this is our campaign of Apocalypse World. Uh, it's a game by D. Vincent Baker and McGay Baker, and it is the first game ever to be powered by the apocalypse. Um, we're going to go around and say hi to everybody and uh, find out who they're playing, and uh, I shall start with Mishy. Hello. Yay! Awesome, awesome. And uh, now let us head over to Seth. Hello! Oh. One moment, I don't think they can hear you. Uh, because, of course, like a like an imbecile, I uh, I forgot to double-check my, uh, my audio settings. Let me do that real quick. I know exactly what's wrong. I will now fix it. One moment, please. Yay! Technical difficulties. Professionalism. Okay. <laughs> I think we're good. Um, I think I think we can hear things now. Um, I'm going to reintroduce everyone because, of <laughs> course, I am. Think of that as a dress rehearsal. Hi, Mishy. How's it going? It's going well. You know, it was uh, super well. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> I'm Michi, also known as Witty Michi. Uh, my character is Krista Oleander. Uh, she is the battle babe of the group. Awesome, awesome. And uh, now let us head over to a new face on the channel, Seth. Hello. Hi, I'm Seth, uh, and I'm going to be playing Hallelujah, or Hal for short, and he is the group's savvy head mechanic. Oops. And finally, we're going to head over to Kurt. Hello. <laughs> Doing all kinds of fun stuff. I am Kurt, and I will be playing Barbello, the angel, the person that's health is in my hands. Is your health? What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Um, Vivesha will be joining us after a bit, um, uh, but uh, for now, this is who we have. Um, as a reminder, before we dive into this, likely do with most games on this channel, we are going to be using the X card, the N card, and the O card. If we hit something that's crossing a line for one of us, any of us can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else, or uh, make an X symbol, and we'll back up and do something else. Uh, if something happens that we're okay having in the game, but we don't want a graphic description of it, we can type an N in the Zoom chat and we'll fade to black on it or put it behind a veil, so it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Uh, finally, if we're exploring a topic or an area of roleplay that's particularly intense for us, but we want to keep going anyway, we can put an O in the chat to let us know we're okay and that we're all good to keep piling on the drama. Uh, something else we can do is put an O with a question mark after it when we're moving into a difficult topic or if we say or we do something and then think, maybe that might have been a little too much. Uh, then everyone else can respond to that again with an X, an N, or an O to let us know if we're still doing okay. Um, so... As we are entering into this apocalypse... We have, uh, we have determined that we have before us a landscape, a blasted wasteland uh, known as the Reaction. There is absolutely nothing that grows there. It's, uh, it's, it's rather barren. But... Uh, to the north of that, we have a, an, a, a, an area, a region, country, who knows? They're not really countries anymore. A region known as Glacier, from which our, uh, our protagonists come. Trundling along in a vehicle that is also a bordello. A... Uh, I imagine it is sort of like the fun yacht that hangs out behind the big boat. <laughs> because uh, the big boat in question is very large. It's, uh, I, I want to say probably, 
Um, would that I had the dimensions in front of me. Uh, but I'd say that it's probably, let's call it a football field and have done with it. Um, maybe one and a half football fields um, on giant treads rolling southward across the reaction. Ahead, we have the mountains. There's a mountain pass. And uh, just sort of nested on the north side uh, of, these, uh, of this mountain pass is the Iron Abbey. It is their first stop as they make their way through the wastelands. Ultimately, they're going to be coming through and heading south to the Arids, which are a bunch of desert regions. So, our, uh, our group has, at this point, made their stop at the Iron Abbey, with whom they trade. And our group here is witness to a ceremony. Now, the Iron Abbey is so called because they, they work a lot with iron. They have uh, a certain amount of uh, things there that they use. It is what folks from a while back, the old folks, might occasionally refer to it as like an overturned battleship. Something like that. Within the uh, the Iron Abbot, Flynn rules from on high, and they make trade, usually of some bits of foodstuffs, with um, uh, with our convoy. But our uh, group here is, is uh, getting to witness a ceremony that is going on. Now, the, uh, there are a number of uh, folks from the cult that runs their uh, massive machine uh, there. The... Uh, the the vehicle that contains the the altar of ice <laughs> where they carry much ice back and forth well at least downward southward um and uh his eminence patriarch atlas uh is uh, is not with us right now he's back on the uh, he's back on the vehicle uh but he has sent his high priestess michaela And, uh, and the child Polaris has been permitted to witness this ceremony as well, although um, she is heavily guarded. And there are folks from uh, around the convoy who have gathered here also to witness this thing. And this is a, a essentially a ceremony being presided over by Flynn, the Iron Abbot. We, uh, we see the... Uh, the abbot and his acolytes. Um, they're all wearing these kind of um, off, off black, like greenish black robes. And some of them are wearing these, uh, the, these helmets that can come down with masks in front of them. With, with sort of like goggle-like things on them. Several of them are carrying what look like these, these well... They're, they're carrying blowtorches, basically. We know what blowtorches are. <laughs> or as I said, they work with iron. I would like, as we go around, I'm going to gather some details about this ceremony and its significance from you, the players. <laughs> um... And at the same time, 
we're going to introduce your characters for the first time. So, I would like to start, and when, uh, when I come to you, I want you to tell me something that your character sees happening as part of the ceremony, something that they know about this ceremony, and then describe your character. What your character looks like and what they're doing. So, if I may, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, well, actually, let me... Look, look, I'm not going to necessarily call on folks if they want to. Who, who would like to start? Sure, I'll go. All right. Um, so... Barbello is slight. She is uh, maybe five two, five one, and maybe a hundred pounds. Very small. Um, she uh, has a tendency to move furtively, and almost as a shadow. And without a doubt, if Polaris is out in public, her attention is riveted on Polaris. I, I'm. She is my utmost concern, and she's also my bellwether. She knows if things are going to get bad, Polaris senses it when the wind shifts. And of course, things look a little ugly because this is the time of red iron. And when they have the blessings of the new iron that's been brought forward before they're going to make the next great structure, several people are going to die. And these are people that have been brought, captured by the abbots, um, who are seen as heretics and who have worked against the abbot and of course they are now um, lashed to girders throughout uh, this place and I am no stranger to bloodshed it's the apocalypse after all but I'm still concerned of what that like, effect it might have on Polaris so I'm keeping my eyes on her the time of red iron folks mark it on your calendars <laughs> That is what is happening right now. Two days yeah. after Groundhog Day. It's it's yeah it's it's <laughs> just uh, just like nine days after Groundhog Day, um, <laughs> is when that is is the time of Red Iron. So your shadow on Iron Girder, it's not going to be good it's, for you. No, it's Two not. Two more weeks of apocalypse. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Still apocalypsing outside, I'm afraid. Uh, but yeah, no, the the uh, that is definitely what is happening. They are um, lashing these people down. Um. To make examples of them, they are making them uh, part of the Abbey. They are the guardians of the Abbey. You can see other guardians of the Abbey along the walls, kind of in poses like this. <laughs> As they have been smelted to it. But... That is one way of making sure that the uh, that the the any new iron formula that they they have is uh, is sound works out very nicely for them. Special ingredients. Who would like to go next? I can go. Um. So I'm just I'm just kind of. Introducing something new to this ritual, then. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was thinking that during the process of the sacrifice, there is also um, kind of a bit of weird augury going on, and specifically in the format of taking these asymmetrical pieces of iron that that have been very, very well polished, called fresh metal, and they get cast like bones, and the reflections will hit kind of these hand-painted weird arcane constellations like around this area to kind of determine who of their like patron saints uh, are like watching right now and what, is, what does that mean and, and uh, try to get a read on that kind of stuff. Um, Hallelujah is watching with uh, muted disdain. <laughs> uh, he is uh, about in his 30s he's a uh, he's five foot something uh white guy with dark hair kind of dark salt and pepper hair uh just like one little tuft forelock coming out from underneath this um like uh 
fireproof balaclava that's just like open around the, the head. Um, he's got a poncho on. He's got armored gloves over these uh, very, very burned arms and hands. Uh, and he's got a shotgun just poking out from under the poncho. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So there is a there is a bit of an uproar at this point in the ceremony, as the bones are cast, the the bones of steel, the iron filings are cast, and they look down. There's a whisper. The abbot nods solemnly and steps forward. This cycle, we have garnered the attention of Saint Mask, the betrayer. And everyone looks around, they're like, oh. there's, there's this uh, bit of a uh, bit of a quandary. And he nods, he says, this was not unprepared for. We know. You know what we must do. He nods. And I'm going to come around to... to Mishi and uh, describe for us Krista and what she sees and what she knows. Um, so... Krista's walking around, like, the outer area of the Abbey. Um, she... She doesn't like being near the abbey they feel it's kind of stuffy um so she's just kind of walking the perimeter essentially with like two of her dogs uh <laughs> but she has you know she has long hair uh like long black hair and um like out of respect for being at the abbey she like has her little turban scarf kind of wrapped around her um and like a coat on just to try and decrease the amount of attention that would be her way uh, as much as possible uh, but what she does notice is that the the skies just happen to be like a tint of red um, and it's not so much just what she sees also what she hears where she hears like the humming and the chanting of some of the people for the ceremony so she's Staying, you know, like going from like window to window, peeking in, um, trying to stay near a door as much as possible, just in case they need an exit strategy, you know, stuff like that. Mm. So, yeah, the the sky is rolling about, and at this point, I think. Um, Polaris is going to look up for a moment as uh, just sort of look up at her charge and or the, she is their charge one of those words one forgets how it, how it works um, and I think uh, Barb just sort of will hear her say they're worried about something. Something is coming for them. What is it they're worried about, though? Death. Death of the entire abbot? Or 
everything. Who else is with is Polaris with right now? Uh, Polaris has uh, so right now uh, Michaela is here. Um, okay. So um, Michaela is very nearby, um, and then there are a few other acolytes from the uh, just from the from the inside from the uh, from the cult. Um, and uh, you're just kind of uh, <laughs> trying to sort things out. That, oh, that's right. The cult, the cult of the flow. That is what the thing is called. The flow. <laughs> I knew I named it. I just. <laughs> is there anyone here that recognizes the the Saint Mask, the Betrayer? Do I? So, I think that as far as um, your own knowledge of uh, Saint Mask the Betrayer, it's mostly what you've heard secondhand because this is it's a different religion, um, but. But, wait a minute, let me just double check our connections here. Um, for that was a thing. Um, okay. Um, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, you've not, you've not heard a lot about... Th this, is, this is probably one of the more obscure ones. They have, like... They they have like seventy some odd saints that they uh, that that they have is you know just sort of watching that looking down on them, um, and uh, it's it's kind of hard as as for yourself. However, if you would like to read the situation, if you would like to read a sitch, yep. then that is a thing you may absolutely do. Excellent. First roll. First roll. First roll. <laughs> one of us. One of us. <laughs> Plus two sharp. My good stats, actually. That's good. Oh, that's great. That's a great roll. That's excellent. Ugh, that's my best ah. stat. <laughs> that's my best stat. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... <laughs> yes. So, um, I think this is more or less when um, they just basically simultaneously, and you, you do not see this coming at all, uh, they instantly just are, didn't quite notice that where everyone was standing, like just sort of right next to each of the, uh, each of these individuals they have strung up. This is immediately when they turn and they just freaking execute them. Um, yeah. It's... Yeah. It's... Uh, they, they, they do not go through with the, you know, uh, the, the delightful smelting alive that everyone was so, so much looking forward to. Um, just immediately they turn, they pull out daggers and they're like... <laughs> I uh, I immediately try to just make sure Polaris is okay. Polaris is like she she's got got her uh, her head in her hands. Um and um <clears throat> the abbot at this point is stepping forward. I uh I I just kind of just disregard that as just again like showing how focused mm -hmm. Babs is on Polaris. Like yeah. I take everything off and just grab her by her head and just we touch heads and I just whisper to her, "They're at peace now. They're at peace now." And I try to use my um, healing touch, okay. which is my move, which hopefully will uh, roll plus weird. All right. Let's see what happens. 
Is what could possibly go wrong now? What could possibly. They don't know. Excellent. Nine. Okay. Better. Let's see. And uh, for your move here, let me see. Do you have this in healing touch? Awesome. Okay. Um, hmm. Does your uh, do, do you have in front of you by by the way whether yeah I so I roll a nine I heal one segment, which you know it's give or take it's just mental health, mm -hmm. uh, but I open my brain so that the so roll that move next. So I opening my brain. Oh yay! Excellent. Mm -hmm. just roll weird again. Awesome. There we go again on my own. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dun, 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 dun. That's the way I want that roll to go. That's it's good. That's if there's any if there's any roll for that to happen, it's it's going to be that one. Um, okay. Brothers, take note. If you're going to open your brain, tens are good. Okay. Something new and interesting about the current situation. I might ask you a question or two. Ten plus gives you good detail. Okay. So, what does this uh, what does this look like when you open your brain to the maelstrom? Um, I think everything falls away. Like we're the only two real people in this kind of very ethereal looking environment, and then um, this threat that they're talking about somehow manifests itself. So it's like everything else just kind of becomes ghostly and spectral. But then there's with swirling dust and everything everywhere, uh, and then that whatever that thing that they're talking about, this threat becomes more manifest. So. Mm. Basically. <clears throat> it's just basically you hear, you kind of, you can hear um, Polaris without, her lips aren't moving, but you can hear it. Um, and, uh, She's saying, the spire, the spire is in danger. And you see briefly, it's like, for a moment, it's like you kind of can see over her shoulder. It's not very clear. But there is, like, you see an explosion of something that looks, you know, well, it's like you see masonry flying all over the place, and it's like it's an explosion of some kind of building that looks kind of uh, like some sort of buttressed building. And, uh, then, very briefly, passing not far from behind, and this person was not there a moment ago, but in your sight, someone passes behind Polaris, someone in a red robe, and you, t and they turn and you see that they're wearing an iron mask. They raise a gloved finger to their lips. And then you hear what sounds for a second like gunfire and then you're out of the vision. I should give you good information, though, because that's what it says to do. Um, <laughs> that was fantastic, Jim. Take um, it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need details. I want weird. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> but that's... Uh, you feel as though something just tried to warn you about something. Mm. Um, and... Uh, you do get the sense that there is betrayal afoot. 
I, I look at um, Michaela like, here. you need to get her out of here, back, back to the, the temple. You're right. She snaps her fingers, and the guards will come forward. Uh, her guards will come for her guard will come forward. She sort of speaks to them for a second. Um, and they will start moving Polaris back. And the abbot kind of is steps forward as the this is kind of the uh, the 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 main thrust of the ceremony is ending. And this is kind of the now that we've skewered everyone, we can now all shake hands and say how wonderful it is to meet one another. Um, portion of the ceremony. The breaking of bread has they've been completed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they're collecting the uh, they're collecting the blood to um, to use as part of their smelting process. Um, they they will they because they can harvest the iron from it. Um, and uh, I think that uh, so at this point um, see the abbot stand step forward you all see the abbot step forward and uh, he will say we welcome our guests we thank you for observing our ceremony would that it were a better omen, but we cannot always expect the best. And at this point, I think Michaela is going to step forward. And she will say, Abbot Flynn, we have something for you. You see there's a case being wheeled forward. A, uh, a sort of container. Looks like it's one of the uh, refrigerant containers that um, they sometimes use in the temple. They have a lot of them. And he looks, and the abbot looks down. Oh, yes. I would ask that we speak privately. And the abbot will, will shrug. And, uh, will say, he, and he, he will look at his, uh, and he will say, no. Let us retreat within. By privately, I would assume that we are still permitted our seconds. She nods. Very good. Bring whom you like. And... He turns, gestures to a couple of um, a couple of his acolytes, and they retreat further into the battleship. <laughs> I have a question, really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, did Michaela? What, what was the sense of? Did we know anything about this transaction or this item that she was bringing in? Or not? Was that like no, this is uh, this is new to you. Okay, and I didn't have anything to do to help with the construction or maintenance of this box um you have uh you have uh, a while back you helped put together boxes like this okay um and so in a general sense yes okay. um but not perhaps you, you didn't put this box together specifically okay um however if you want to if you would like to read this read this itch you may do yes. so Uh, read a sitch with my, with my sweet, sweet zero. Here we go. Uh, sweet zeros. Let's do it. Delicious zeros. Oh, didn't, wait. Why you no go? Nothing's happening go? when I press the button. 
Um, let me. It's a, it's a pop out. Let me try this. Let's try it inside. Oh, yeah. The thing didn't come up when it was a pop out. I got it, though. Ah, excellent. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> so. <coughs> this is going really well. Oh, um, boy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So, at that point, Michaela turns as you're sort of trying to look at the box, and she rests her hand on your shoulder. Mm. She says, Hal, will you come with me? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. And just kind of steps up behind her to follow into. And, and kind of flashes a look to where Bella, like, I don't like not knowing things. It's probably his constant state. Where's Krista? Apparently. Yeah, I was going to... I mean, that's my next question. What is Krista doing during all of this? Um, Chilling. <laughs> She's outside. I was wondering, I was going to ask if the room that they're going to go into has a window. You can attempt to locate one, if you wish. Um, let me actually, let me just check one little thing here. Um, okay. Um, do you normally, you normally do, uh, do you, do you normally do any security for the cult at all, or is it just for the bordello usually? Usually for the bordello, but because, um, Polaris does have, like, that affection towards Krista, like, I'd say sometimes she helps out. Okay. Um, you will notice that she will that uh, as this is happening, um, that uh, Michaela will sort of glance in your direction and kind of give you a nod as though yes, that is exactly what you should be doing right now. Um, please watch this and make sure none of us die. Type deal. Um, so, as you are endeavoring to, uh, to, uh, find a, a spot from which you can observe what is going on in that room, um, I feel I'm going to lean, lean a lot on reading a sitch, so you, uh, let, let's have you do it as well. <laughs> oh no! Okay, here I go. Uh... Do I put any input? What am I do? What is this input value? Just put um, it as zero. I don't think you. Ha yeah, you, you, you don't have any uh, modifiers on this, as far as I'm aware. Okay, aside I'm from just, just, I'm just making sure. As I can. Base score. That is a very good roll. Someone finally su succeeded in reading the sitch. That's awesome. Excellent. All right. So uh, you get to ask three of these questions that are um, on the uh, that are with read a sitch. Uh, do you want me to put them in the chat here? Uh, yes, because I'm I like scrolling to try to find it. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I asked. I get to ask three. That's correct. Okay. Um, first question is: Which enemy is the biggest threat? That's a great question. Um, which enemy is the biggest threat? Uh, I, I'd say right now the, the biggest threat is... So, you think that... I mean, the abbot clearly it might have something... Here, here's the, here's the, the weird thing as you're reading this situation. Um, the abbot looks kind of like he probably has something up his sleeve here. The thing is, you also note that Michaela has something up her sleeve. And it just depends on how things go. Um, there's something about her attitude with that, with that case that she's bringing in. That, that's, uh, that's, that's rolling in. Um, that, uh, yeah, there's something... There's definitely something going on here. 
And a lot of it's gonna hang on how this conversation goes, probably. Okay. And then, uh, what should I be on the lookout for? I know I'm trying to find a window. <laughs> you are? Yes. So you, uh, <laughs> if that is true. You are trying to find a window. Um, so there is a, uh, yes, there's an area that where you can actually, um, if you climb up a little bit, you actually can get a line of sight on them um, as to where they are going to be. Um, it actually is going to be through glass, um, but you, you're able to follow them successfully, and I will describe in a moment the area where they are led. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I will say it, is, it looks kind of like a greenhouse. Oh. Well, that's fun. Um, and then the next one is which enemy is most vulnerable to me? Well, um, probably most vulnerable would be the um, the second the, the the two seconds that um, two acolytes um, that um, that uh, are with the the abbot. Um, if they try anything. Uh, you can probably most easily take them out. Okay. Um, let me also ask, you are going to have to climb up. What are you going to have your dogs do? They're going to sit at that. the base of the tree, just kind of chilling. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah. It's, one of uh, them does have a bottle of alcohol next to them, because she put it there with it. Excellent. <laughs> um, it will... It will consider it will consider starting a, a, a life of alcoholism, um, and uh, no. uh, you actually yeah the thing you're actually climbing is sort of a bank of equipment or an old bank of equipment, and you can basically run along these pipes along the uh, that, that are above the greenhouse and look down into it and see exactly what's going on. Okay. So, what's going on? We ask. Well. Uh, Hallelujah, and uh, Michaela are uh, and uh, and and you know a dude pushing the pushing the the little thing on wheels with the uh, with the case on it. Um, come inside, and. Uh, see they that he uh, takes you you go through this this greenhouse um, where there are a number of a uh, number of edible plants being grown um, and the abbot will sort of call over his shoulders shoulder over his shoulders over his shoulders is I believe it is time for us to see if we might better our relationship trust I show I sh I uh, I'm showing tr I am showing trust to you by showing you some of our operation and what we seek to do. We have hope that soon what you provide in ice we may be able to provide in plant life. And you're looking around. I will say, uh, Hallie, you're looking around. You don't know that there are quite enough plants here to be able to like cover everybody in the wastes. Um, but you know, if their production is going really well, then you know maybe they, you know, in a in a few years they might actually have something. Um, and uh, he takes you into this. Yeah. Yeah, actually. So, 
He takes you to this point where there is kind of a... There's a tree that has been planted at the center of this thing. Uh, how common are trees? Like, when was the last time I saw one? There are some up north. Uh, there are... But the ones that are alive, usually, are the ones that you see down south. They're kind of more like palm trees. Okay. This is kind of like the trees you see up north, except it has a few leaves on it. Which is kind of freaking amazing. Yeah. Sitting in awe, staring at it. And, uh. Is it an apple tree? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it does, it, well. It does have, like, one or two blossoms of something on it that perhaps will turn into something. Um. Yeah, it will turn around. And uh, finally, it is as you're sort of in the middle of this hall. And this hall, this greenhouse. And he will say, And I have, uh, there are more things I can show you. There is something I would like to ask about. But uh, of course, if you, and uh, Michaela at this point will just sort of be looking and be like, We have this to present. To you. And she nods to the, uh, the to her assistant. To the, her assistant rolls the cart forward, touches a few things on the top of this case, and the case opens. And, um, you see that uh, inside the case is a block of ice and inside the block of ice is what appears to be a human head. Yeah, it looks down. <laughs> and I think before we do even anything else, um, Seth, you actually have an opening move, don't you? I do. We, we haven't done yet? What, what yeah, is this opening bone. move? It's called Bone Feel. Um, I'm going to roll weird, and if I get a 10 plus, uh, I, get a, I hold 1 plus 1. Uh, which is terminology I'm not super familiar with. On oh, a yeah, 7 yeah. to 9, mm -hmm. I hold 1. Uh, at, e at, uh, at any time, either you or the MC can spend your hold to have you already be there with the proper tools and knowledge with or without any clear explanation why. Uh, if you're holding awesome. 1 plus 1, take 1 forward now. On a miss, uh, you um, MC holds 1 and can spend it to have uh, me be there already, but somehow pinned, caught, or trapped. Excellent. Yeah, and it yeah, it's just basically I'm holding uh, when I'm holding one, then it's just ba it's essentially that uh, a, a, a one one token which I can then spend oh, okay. to do a thing, basically. The currency. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see how I do. Nine. That's not uh, bad. So I hold one. Okay. So at any time, either you or the MC can spend your hold to have you already be there with proper tools and knowledge, with or without any clear explanation why. Okay. Awesome. So I just, yeah. So at some point, if there is a situation where you would like to suddenly appear, mm. um, then you can spend that hold and you'll be there. <laughs> awesome. And I'll have just the thing. Exactly. Cool. So, um, but you're already here. Um, of course. You got here as a result of a failed roll. Um, <laughs> and perhaps we're beginning to see why, because there's this frozen head. Um, the abbot looks down. He says, what, uh, what is this? Who is this? 
And this Michaela crosses her arms. Do you not recognize them? Cannot say I do. This was Nocturne, one of your acolytes, who you sent to spy on us. <laughs> and, uh, the abbot looks down. Looks down slowly. This one was expelled from our order five years ago. And I find it the the I and I'm rather wounded that you would think. We would have a need to spy upon your merry band. Hallelujah, very surreptitiously has his hand threaded into the shotgun underneath his poncho, just, just in case. Just ready. She's just sort of looking. <coughs> and at this point, Michaela's um, stepping forward slowly. You're going to claim you have had absolutely no contact with this one. They were not feeding you information. I will say, um, Krista, it's kind of hard to see the who it is from from you know up here to to, to get the features of the head, but that's what they're describing anyway. <coughs> anyway. I'm um, talking to Krista's leg too, like, what? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> I'm going to. In okay. How. Knowing Michaela, having traveled with her in, the, in this time, would she mm -hmm. be, like, really upset with me if I, if I spoke up to try to help? Is she, like, what's the. Because I feel like stepping in because I could help. She wouldn't be. I'm just afraid of messing up upset. her plans. Um, she, she is. She's not telling me something. I mean, it, she seems to be genuine in what she is saying now. Okay. So she seems to believe what she is saying. Okay. Um, so it doesn't seem as though she's got any kind of. Um, the the extent of the Rube Goldbergness was that case. I think probably is is the okay. sense you're getting. Okay. Um. I think he's just. I think uh, I'm just gonna s step up and be like, I might be able to help figure this out. Kind of, kind of addressing the abbot. Indeed. Yeah, things uh, speak to me. So, if you'll uh, allow me. Huh. Oh, well, it's your present. Yes, it was, wasn't it? And he's just going to very gingerly walk up and, and kind of flip one hand out of his poncho and gently, like, put his hand against the ice. And I want to use my move, Things Speak. Mm hmm. And there's several questions that I can ask when we roll weird. Uh, and I can ask 3 out of 10 plus, 7 to 9, I can ask 1. Uh, so I roll first, is that how that works? Yeah, yeah, you roll first. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I was muted! <laughs> <laughs> Speak. 
Where's my little... Oh, that's not working. There it is. Duh. Okay. Is it rolling? What is going on here? Yeah, you've rolled it, looks like, three times three now. Three times? Oh, yes. I didn't hear a pop. Um... My bad. So the first, first one. So the, yeah, the first one. It's, it's still, you got seven to nine, so you get to ask one question. Okay. I should probably turn on that that button again. That oh yeah. <laughs> <makes noise. laughs> okay. Uh, so the question that I'm going to ask, which is good because there's only one that I really wanted to ask. Um. What is wrong with this, and how might I fix it? Well, the uh, the smart ass answer is that this person's head has been separated from their shoulders. <laughs> Don't you dare. Uh, Don't you but I'm dare. not going to say that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I, think, I think specifically the context mm -hmm. in which I am searching, I'm trying to get a feel for if this was an agent that was an agent of the Iron Abbot who was killed or if it was a rogue agent that was Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Doing something else. Um so, what is this like usually for you when you when things speak to you? What is it? What what, what would we see? What would happen? Um, I think it's it's similar to Barbello's, where uh, everything else kind of loses a certain amount of tangibility, uh, and it just becomes focused on this on this face. And as I'm staring at this face in the ice, all it does is just shift its gaze, and there's no actual words spoken mm -hmm. but I just kind of uh, we just kind of tap the surface of each other's consciousness okay. and kind of get a feel so yes this is someone clearly dead but as you go into this state you can kind of see and hear its eyes shift to you mm -hmm. um, and uh And you get this sort of this look and this kind of communication sort of like directly to you that it's like... I never thought I would be back inside this place again. I was taken in. by others. This is no longer my home. You're kind of getting us, and so you're, you're kind of like, you can kind of sort of end as, as we're sort of going through this, you sort of, you can, you can talk to it if you want to. Okay, okay. Um, uh, as, we, as we get your answer. Yeah. yeah. So can, can I ask yeah. it anything further yeah, yeah go ahead okay uh, i'm just gonna be like is the iron abbot a safe ally why do you think i left the safest ally is the one with the most guns Or so um, I thought, at least, when I lived. Did Michaela kill you? <laughs> yes. What were you hoping to find out by spying on us? I was to keep your 
company from self-destruction. I was <laughs> to watch and see and get, if necessary, get her out. Alaris. No. Then who? And I think this is the point at which it's going to I think it's going to start fading. You can almost sort of hear a name. But I will say you do kind of glance up for a second. <laughs> do you wave? <laughs> yeah. Now, Krista, you did not hear that conversation because that was entirely in Hal's head. But um, I mean, she'll see him look her <laughs> way, so she's yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> Hal, you see Krista. A, you see that very... the, this head is looking at Krista. Oh. Okay. I think like a like a like a puppy, he kinda goes. And looks back down and slaps the ice. This was not the Abbot's man. At least not when he Michaela at this point sort of turns to you and she grabs your arm. She says, you're sure. You're absolutely positive. All my life, Michaela. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And the abbot just sort of is like, well, never mind that. The uh, gift giving, it's a difficult thing these days. Come, I want to show you something. <laughs> and uh, the abbot and his people will turn. And they will head into a side room. Uh, as as I am following them, I look back up to Krista and I'm kind of like... Mm. Okay. And... Uh, let me see if we can sneak this in real quick. Um, Krista, when uh, you kind of you, you travel over, you realize that your your view is blocked of that room, but you can hear if you if you stand above it. You can hear what's going on in there, just kind of faintly carried up. <clears throat> and you come into a room, and you get this sort of heady scent, this sweet, almost sickly sweet smell as you enter the room. And there are a bunch of different plants in here under these very specific lights, dedicated lights. And... As he... As the abbot just sort of turns and waits, waits for you to enter. Do you like my private collection? She's following it too, yeah? Mm hmm. Yeah. I think you would defer to her instead of speaking out of turn. She looks. Can I see it? It's. It's rather remarkable. It is. Is it not? We have harnessed our abilities to make it so that this can be replicated tenfold, perhaps a hundredfold. We have learned a means to bend the maelstrom to our will. 
to make this happen. And we are prepared to share it. But something will need to be done to balance things out a bit. For there is one thing that makes it so that we cannot create our paradise, he says, gesturing to the plants. One thing, should it be, re should it be removed? It, then we can bring it about. And uh, Michaela's one thing. What manner of thing is this? Oh, it's quite simple. A structure at the edge of Sapien Town. And uh, which you know is the the village of the uh, of the scientists. And I believe we're going to take a quick break. I believe we have another person coming in, so we're going to do that real quick. Uh, we'll be back, but uh, so it's about half half time, so we're going to go ahead and take our take our regular break. We'll be back in five ten minutes. See you soon.
We have returned! And, uh... This is... Once again, we're in the, uh... uh we, we have, uh... We now have Vivacia with us. Hello! Hi! Um... Just, uh... Briefly, before we return to the scene, uh... uh just, uh... Let, tell, tell folks who you're playing. And, uh... We will, we will come back to you in a little bit. All right, so hi, I'm Vivesha. I'm playing uh, Madame Nandi. Uh, she is uh, the Master D of uh, the Traveling Travesty, which is a fun place that you will get to meet on some point. Yes, probably very soon. Um, but for the meantime, we're in, this, uh, we're in this little room in this greenhouse, this little side room that... Uh, is sort of locked off from the rest of the greenhouse. Um, now, as we uh, as we are settling back in here, so. Just to, just to be clear, uh, Krista has been, up until now, on top of this room, can't see into the room, can hear very faintly. Um, and Barb has been kind of, was left sort of at the base of these, uh, um, these, these old uh, pieces of equipment that Krista had to, had to climb up to get onto the pipes um, with, with, the, the couple, with a couple of dogs. Um, I have names for three dogs. Um, are there, are, are, but you only brought two of them, is that right? Uh, okay, all right. Okay. Um, I was thinking in these situations, I kind of serve as the third dog. Like, I definitely am very willing to follow Krista wherever she goes, whatever she says. She has the biggest gun. It works nicely. It does. Um, Krista, are you moving, or uh, are you going to stay up there? Um, she's moving because she's not liking what she's hearing too mm -hmm. much uh so she's moving so that way she can try to get inside uh just you know just to wait and see if like anything else progresses okay uh one thing you're going to notice is there doesn't appear to be a direct way into this room from where you are standing um but there are some places on the greenhouse where you could find a window and sort of slip in um now let us so you start doing that, and you can still kind of hear this. There, there are no one else is right now in the greenhouse because everyone else is at the the after party for the ceremony. Um, they're having cocktails um, out on the uh, out on the out on the foredeck, um, and uh, once again in this room with these strange sort of almost Venus flytrap looking plants. Um, the abbot has said. Yes, very simply, they uh, they say over there that they have come into harmony with the maelstrom. But my understand, I have discovered that they are manipulating it, just uh, the same as we do. They have a beacon. Their beacon is confusing the matter. Now, if you should go and deactivate this beacon one way or another make sure that it is no longer a problem we will be able to go forward with our plan and provide you with exclusive rights to carry the vegetables Michaela is just sort of like sort of shaking her head slowly and sort of looking at uh, looking over it. Just looking over it to see what Hal's expression is. Uh, I think yeah, when she looks over he's kind of doing the same thing to her and uh, he kind of uh, I think he's like so you know uh, exactly they're doing with this item in Sapien Town? It did not become clear until Saint Mask was consulted. 
it would appear that they are directing it in some fashion. Perhaps. Hmm. And Michaela is saying, I do not think this is something we, a trade we can make at this time. But I do thank you for your hospitality and understanding. The abbot nods and says, Ah, quite. Well, there is a gift that I have for you. Something of a, an exchange. Perhaps an incentive to assist us with this problem. I have given, and uh, she says, what gift? Well, I have given it to you already. It's an excellent scent, isn't it? Buck. <laughs> She's sort of looking around. Says, yeah. Now, there is, of course, an antidote. You have four days before you would have to, before any effects would start to be, uh, to be shown. Just enough time, I would think, with your vehicle to reach Sapien Town and come back. After taking care of business there. Should you do that, I should be very inclined to provide you with that antidote. We'll start making it as soon as you leave. Great. That's, uh... Okay. So Michaela looks like she's about to lunge at him. Okay, do you yeah, want to do it, anything? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just step up kind of very gently, not even, like, pushing or anything. Like, I think we got got. And I think maybe we do what they want until we're so much better. And then we can negotiate a new deal. Okay. So I think I'm going to have you make a roll here Shoot. to... Um, this is almost like fast talking and manipulating. I think we're going to go with uh, the roll to seduce or manipulate someone. Good thing I'm at minus one for that. Oh, that is great. Hey ya! <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right. She sees the wisdom. And uh, when I say when I say negotiate a new deal, I like s slowly move my uh, my poncho to show the shotgun still, just to kind of like let's go let's go do this and then burn their whole place down. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. She kind of she she looks. And, uh, she's like, right, yes. Well then, it seems we are partners for a time, Abbott. It, the abbot says, It would seem so. Had you not insulted me, this would not have been necessary. But, uh, let us say that uh, the offer is still open. We can be magnanimous.
Sounds see good. You, see you in four days, then. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna just start walking out. <laughs> Very overwhelmed right so, now. Uh, Krista, you're going to see uh, first Hal and then Michaela and uh, her uh, her assistant come out of this this side room. She's just gonna look over and just you know wonder what happened in the time that it took for her to stay up there and you know get down to them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, are we face to face now? Sorry, is that what you said? Um, I don't know if Krista has revealed herself or not. <laughs> oh well, yeah, she's standing at the doorway. Okay, yeah, she's there. <laughs> All right, I, as I kind of come up, I'm just like, they <laughs> caught us real good, so now we're gonna work for them for a minute. I'll explain it later, but we need to get Michaela out of here before she starts setting fires. <laughs> Krista just kind of looks at Michaela. She's like. Do you, do you want to set fires? No, she doesn't. Let's go. Not yet. Oh, okay. I look at my brother. Are you okay? You don't look okay. No. <laughs> yeah, as you're no. kind of heading out. And you're no. Like... We should go. Yeah, you, uh, I'll just, I'll just, uh -huh. sorry, I was just going to say I looked to Michaela to lead the way. You know, Michaela is immediately marching back toward the, uh, uh, toward the, 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 the massive vehicle. Um, and, uh, she just sort of looks over her shoulder to, uh, to you and she says, We'll send uh, we'll send the route update shortly. All right. I'll I'll go up and take um, take uh, Hal's hand and then try to do that um, the the, the, the um, healing touch again. Uh, actually, I won't let you touch me. Oh, okay. As soon as as soon as you come up, I'm like, no, don't. Oh. I don't. Oh. Um, I don't know what it is. You're not. I'm you're not. Yeah. Something's not yeah. right about you. There's something yeah. wrong. Yeah, that um, the guy. What's his name? Iron Man. He. He got some kind of poison. In the air, and it brought us into a room and hotboxed us with it. And now. <laughs> uh, now. I'm poisoned. I think, and so is Michaela. Or he's bluffing. I never thought about that. He's probably not bluffing. And now we have to go do something for him. Uh, Sapient Town. Nah. Uh, Sapient Town. Got to do something. Uh, um, blow something up. And then we come back, and they give us a little cocktail, and we cheers, and then everything's all better. <laughs> I, I, I imagine so that I'm probably about a foot shorter than Hal is, and I just like kind of again reach up to him. I'm like, Hal, you, you, you know this is what I do. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I help people. I help you, and I can tell that your body is is hurting. Let me, let me help you. Don't. Let me, let me help you. Arbello, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna listen to me. Ah. Uh, you're not gonna mm, see because I don't know what it is, and you're not gonna get it. So that's that's. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm, I'm trying to tell you. Okay, no touchy. Stay away. Four days. I kind of and look over at, at, at Krista. I'm like, would you tell him to let me help him? He's going to die. He could die. Krista's petting the dogs. Oh, uh. I mean, it's it's probably plant based. There's a lot of plants over there. Like, if anything, maybe when we just go back, just run some tests on him. You know, like. He's just being, you know, he's just, he's just, he's being hally, it's fine. He's fine, he's got, we got four days, it's cool. If not, I'll, I'll just, I'll do something. You see, you it's know. fine. We got four days. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll go prepare my analysis. This is in Mama Sups. You bring him to me. He doesn't want to let me bring him. 
I don't know why, brother, but may you bring him to me and I will find out what's wrong and I will deal with it. Hallie, you should go before Nandy gets involved. I'm just saying. All right, taco smooches. Mm. I'm hungry. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> go along. They, they follow at your heels. Okay. So the uh, such as it is, the. Uh, Root information is uh, is sent, and uh, a journey southward begins. And I think we're going to now uh, shift our perspective for but a moment. Um. I think we're going to head to the Traveling Travesty. Kind of zooming in here. Just as a uh, reminder, who is uh, who all? I know I know Nandi is, but uh, who else is going to be uh, aboard the Travesty as it is shuttling south? Well, um, you know, all my girls. Um, the main attraction being Gemma. One, one um, of our most diva uh, burlesque dancers. Mm -hmm. There is uh, Hank the Bouncer, who is far eclipsed by Krista, who likes to hang, hang out and have a good time at the Traveling Travesty. Um, so yeah, uh, a whole bunch of girls, my barkeep, whose name I misplaced right now, and, <laughs> and uh, Gemma the Dancer, and Hank the Bouncer. Yeah. I don't think we actually named the... Okay, quick question. Um, I have the bouncer's name as Torque. Has it changed to Hank? I don't remember actually naming him, so it doesn't matter. Whatever someone you have, did. we'll do. I think someone else claimed your bouncer. All right. Um, because you claimed Gemma, and then someone else claimed the bouncer. Um, so his I, name is? Uh, I have Torque. T-O-R-Q-U-E. All right, Torque Does is any, good. Anyone, anyone remember who claimed the bouncer by any chance? Is there? Yes, that was, that was oh, Krista. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he's um, not as good as you are. Um, and the bartender thus far I don't have a name for either, so that, that will happen one way or another. Perhaps their name is just bartender, we don't know. Um, <clears throat> but... So... You have a it's little probably, time. Probably something like Destiny or something like that. It's entirely possible. Um, we, we can name the bartender Destiny. Um, or a density when I'm feeling uh, when I'm feeling like uh, reading it the wrong way. Um, so we're, we're aboard the. Uh, t tell us a little bit about um, as we're as we're heading south in the uh, in this vehicle. Tell us where we find Nandi and what we see. So. Um the traveling travesty, you know, will we'll have uh, storage for everything that we're going to be setting up. But on the top of the vehicle would be um, the living quarters. And we'll probably have a snug little area that's kind of set up as a bar, as a lounge. Kind of tight, you know, not as, you know, we're not on the big vehicle. And um, that's uh, more than likely where you uh, would find Nandy and most of the girls hanging out and chit-chatting and uh, reading, maybe playing some card games. Nice. Um, is, um, so Krista is also aboard this vehicle. Um, are you going to uh, tell Nandy anything about what's been happening, or are you just going to uh, let her be blissfully unaware? Um, well, she'll tell her if she asks. Yeah. So I'm what? assuming Nandy asked, so she what? probably oh. told her. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's like, like, the moment she gets back, you know, it's like, so tell yep. me all about it. Uh, you know, red stuff, more red stuff. Lots of humming. 
lots of singing. And then the alcohol wasn't that great. And then Hal got poisoned and Mikhail got poisoned. And did I mention the alcohol wasn't that great? Like, roll it all the way back. Lots of red stuff. Yeah, like the sky was red, and then like I overheard some people saying that like normally when this ritual happens, like there's iron involved, but this time they just kind of stab them. And I feel like that's so left field, but you know, I mean, it's the first time I've been to it, so maybe, maybe I, what I was overhearing was a bunch of lies. And did I mention that alcohol was bad? Yeah, I know that that's the worst thing. That's that's just you know why. You... Mm -mm. Don't don't deal with the monks. However, did they stab him with iron knives? I don't know. I was outside walking the dogs. Walking the dogs. I mean, I may have found a little bit of alcohol while everyone was doing the ritual, but it was bad. So we just had to go for a walk. You know, I'm just saying. Just saying. Well, I, I know if it was good, you would bring it for me to analyze. But uh, how did the girls do? How did, uh, how did BMP do? Uh, they they did great. Um, only problem that I I see happening is uh, you know, we're working a job that we don't want to work apparently. Um, something about Hal might die in four days, but like I don't. I mean, should be fine. I'm not worried about it. So you tell me, B is not worried about this at all, and P is not worried about Michaela at all. I don't know if P knows, but um, B wants Hallie to uh to go and get you know run some tests, but Hallie is being kind of stubborn. You know that that's how Hallie is. Hallie doesn't like to be touched, anyways. I've tried, doesn't work out. Um, and uh, but yeah, you know, so it's, it's just how it is. Four days. It'll be fine. Uh, four, four, four days. Four days and then Hal's gonna die? Uh, that is what they told us. Yes. The Abbey. The Abbey, that's, that's what his doucheness said. Well, he, like, has a bunch of plants. So, first off, he wants my Hal to die. And second off, he got plants he did not share with me. I am... I am unhappy. Did you bring me any of those plans? I brought you a leaf. All right, all right. I can, I can live with that. I can live with that. And she kind of turns around and says, she's like, girls, shh, 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 And they're like, shh. Okay, heading out. All right, and, uh, and uh, she kind of get, gets out a little little herbalism kit because, you know, um, she, she makes that alcohol herself. It's called mm -hmm. Desert Rose that uh, pretty much nobody really knows what's in it. So, uh, she, she'll put on some gloves. It's just nice and purple. It tastes good. It makes you feel good, but nobody really knows what's in there. I'm noticing a trend. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, and, uh, she, she puts on her gloves and, and, you know, her little things and she just, uh, starts, uh, checking up on the thing. And Krista, please, please go and, uh, check on B and, and my Hal and make sure everything's all right. Well, I, I did let Hallie know that if he doesn't go to B, uh, I would send you. Mm -hmm. So please go, please go check on him. If he has not gone, um, please let me know and I'll take care of that. Now, Shushu, go take the doggies. Okay. All right. Um, so just so that I get a good image here of, uh, of this... Um, also, uh, Krista, where, where are you heading first? If you're going anywhere. Um, are you she's probably going to go check to see if Hal went. All right. So more than likely he didn't, but she's going to go check his place. Okay. So I need to know where is, uh, where is Hal and where is Barbella? Uh, Hal is in his workshop. Uh, and, uh, he is... Well, I, I mean, yeah, he's 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 in there losing his mind a little bit, <laughs> which which looks like him just wearing his pants and like the hat thing is off, so he really does just have like a little bang thing right there, and that's it. The rest of it's shaved, and he's got this like 
machining drill open and like set to spin really fast and be red hot and he's just like sitting in front of it like a caveman just like staring at it like looking for something excellent excellent uh, I think that uh, where is uh, Barbello right now well if um, Seth or Hal is occupied then I will see See if I can sneak a blood sample from him. <laughs> and that's what yeah. I've been trying to do for the last like twelve hours or eighteen hours, just waiting for those moments just get, to get forward, in just really deep in. Coming out from behind a tapestry. <laughs> step forward, pick uh, just do some pickpocketing and just steal a little bit of blood right out of his body. Um, Must have just been the wind. It sounds excellent. Uh, first off, what uh, what means are you attempting to use to collect the blood? Do you have like a syringe or something I like have that? Syringe. Okay, excellent. Um, <clears throat> this this won't this will be delightful. Um, so <laughs> let's see. Kill me. You are uh, well. What does not kill you? Um, That's right. Uh, will uh, will amuse us. Uh, so. Uh, I, I know what I would probably recommend because it's what I'm not good at, and that's being cool. <laughs> I kind of feel like you gotta. Uh, let me just double check yeah. here, though. Um, do something under fire. Yeah, that's kind of what we're uh, what we're looking at. Um, there so, go. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and uh, roll your cool for us. Partial success. Um, flinch, hesitate, or stall. The MC can offer you a worse outcome. Hard bargain or ugly choice. Um, so, Hal, could you give me a little more detail about what you are working on or doing right now? Um, I think he's doing... I think he's unsuccessfully trying to tap into the Maelstrom. Um, I feel like in times in really small windows before, as he's been working on things, he'll get kind of this lens into seeing things, kind of like seeing things in the flames. Uh, and he's not doing it right now because he doesn't actually know how to do it properly, but he's trying very hard. Okay. So, um, here's the thing. Uh, if you wish to successfully collect the blood without um, Hal noticing, yes, you kind of get a sense that he is trying to tap into the maelstrom. Um, you think if you assist that process that you might be able to do it. It would, of course, mean exposing your own mind to the Maelstrom as well. So there will be some distraction. And I, I think I was reluctant to do that after having seen this masked uh, yeah. saint come by. There definitely is some disturbances, but I've been stewing and worrying and worrying that I'm just going to do it. So I'll open my brain. Open the brain! And I did forget that I have um, I have six cents, so instead of rolling weird, I get to do roll sharp when I open. Oh, my excellent! Brain. Okay. So here we go. It's going to help me or not? Oh, that is good. Now, things that uh, I just need to note real quick here, um, because we need to be keeping track of this, and I don't think we have been specifically. Um, has anyone, and luckily, Roll20 will keep a record for us, so we don't have to panic. But <laughs> if you can recall, if you have been, uh, if you, has anyone rolled a highlighted stat yet? Yes. If you I have, you need to be marking XP when you do it. Got it. Um, so just as a note, and we can you know, kind of, when, as, as we each individually have time, we can go back over the, uh, Other you know, question. scroll back up over Roll20 to see what we rolled, but yeah. Mm -hmm. If you roll a highlighted roll and fail, do you still mark experience? It just says the player marks experience when she rolls a highlighted stat. Um, I'm going to right now assume, unless I find different when I read over this more carefully, I'm going to assume that that means whenever you roll it. Okay. Um, cool. We'll see. Uh, I, will, I will check um, that, that, double check that, so this may... This may change, um, but uh, as we attempt to get closer to the rules as written, uh, but right now, as far as I'm seeing, uh, it's just whenever you roll it. 
Um, so, you know, whenever a player rolls one of her highlighted stats, she marks experience, fills in one of the little experience dot circles on her character sheet. Okay. Um, so, um, you got a 12. You succeeded. And, uh, so, you open your brain to the psychic maelstrom. But more importantly, I'd like to basically not just get blood, but get a diagnosis, if I could. All right. So, well, this is probably going to help some. Um, you can see um, how kind of in the maelstrom as well, and you can kind of do this thing where you can, like, throw a rock, a psychic rock, in the right direction, basically, that he will hear and then it will perhaps become easier for him to access the psychic maelstrom. Um, that so do you do you do that? I'm not gonna yes. call for a roll for it. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, like, turn the key or whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So while this is happening, uh, Hal, I would like you to go ahead. You're gonna get. I'm gonna give you a plus one okay. um, to uh, to this roll to access the maelstrom. I definitely get super creepy just right up. In Okay, sounds good. I'm, so I'm gonna roll op to open my brain. Is that what's up? Roll the brain open, Re. Get a plus one. Mm -hmm. Is that the forward help interference thing? That is correct. It's, it's plus one. Oh, watch out! Excellent. Woo! Same result. Okay, I will come back around to you in just a moment. Uh, let me finish with. Uh, let me finish with Barbello's acid trip. Then we'll start yours. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> The, uh, <laughs> while you, <laughs> oh, God. so, uh, it's things, it's like things are happening in slow motion as you sort of come up behind, as you see sort of turning and looking in the other direction, you jab the needle in and you pull, you can hear the blood rushing river like into the syringe. You pull it out, and you're looking at it against the flashing sky, and You How sort of like, like you see the little, you can see the blood cells That's and you up. fall <laughs> into the syringe <laughs> and you find yourself walking in a blood red garden and uh, you see that there is and you see these plants that are like Venus flytrap-like. They're pulsing and pulsing and pulsing. And you're looking at them, trying to figure them out. And that is when they notice you. I will... I'd like to know what you are doing in reaction to this. They've turned and they're like looking in your direction oh, going here. And the headlights just freeze and they can slowly try to back away. Nothing to see here. Nothing, Nothing to see here at all. Nothing. Do something oh. under fire, please. Okay. Oh, good. I got my shining stat. <sighs> you smell this sickly sweet odor. No. I've done a terrible thing. <laughs> you find a deeper connection with this plant. And you begin somewhat to understand it a little bit. 
hit uh, it this plant does kind of seek to spread itself everywhere both physically and psychically it exists on both planes it also has a history of pain this blood is representative of this iron that was forced shaped manipulated into patterns that could wrangle the maelstrom to force this thing into existence this plant and the plant does does hunger to uh Maybe just a bit. But do you think you see the beginnings of how they, with brute force at the Iron Abbey, hammer the maelstrom into the shapes that they want? Which is actually kind of dangerous. If they apply this to anything other than making plants grow, there could be a serious problem soon. Mm -hmm. Also, you realize, just sort of as an afterthought, that you've just been poisoned. <laughs> I thought as much. <laughs> We're going to shift over to Hal. <laughs> God damn you. <laughs> You're seeking answers. What are you trying to what for for what purpose is Hal peering into the maelstrom? Uh I want to find the best way to kill the iron abbot. Ah, excellent. Okay. Um Oh my god. Okay. The, the poetic way is, of course, you got a, uh, let me just, uh, I'm, I'm rolling back, you got a 12, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's like you're sort of, things kind of slow down, your vehicle slows down, and you kind of hop down and you walk onto the, uh, onto the glassy surface of this uh, lower part of the reaction. You're kind of looking out at this plane. And, uh... This. You see there a figure in the distance with a red robe just kind of standing there, its robe blowing in the breeze. It waves to you. Uh, I'm going to approach. Is it, it, it doesn't look reminiscent of the Iron Abbey at all. It does not. Okay, I just wanted to make sure there wasn't similarities there. there there's like maybe uh, at, at Robe, you know, that's kind of where it... Yeah. That's where it ends. Um, but as you get closer, you see it appears to be someone wearing a mask. Do you know who the Iron Abbot is? Oh, yes. Very much so. Is there any chance you know what he did to me? Do you know what the Abbot is? A betrayer, I suppose? He, he wishes to. it is not, that was not his job. What does he want to do? Hmm. He wishes merely 
to control all he surveys. See, that's the that's the inclination I got. I really don't like. I don't like the idea that he's trying to put it. You know. He does not understand the purpose of the tools he is given. He does not Sorry, understand the art of betrayal. He is an amateur. That was said with some conviction. Any chance uh, you might be a little more schooled? You can almost hear a smile behind the mask. There is that chance. I'd like to learn. Ah. I could show you. What have you to offer? That's a good question. A better question is perhaps what is your path? I need to know more about... Oh, how do you say it? My beasts of burden. I need to know more. I need to understand a lot more because if I do that, I can protect anybody that I want. I need power and I need it in the form of the way the machines speak to me. Ah. You wish to be one with your machines. I wish to be close with them. I don't know if being one with them is exactly what I want. I still want to be me, you know. An important distinction. I could show you how to seize this understanding. from those who have it. Is that your desire? Yeah. What do I call you? Mask. It's a whimsical fucking day, Mask. He sort of turns, he looks, he says. He nods. If you wish the abbot dead, and you wish to carry it out through an understanding of machinery, I see a way in which that could be performed most poetically. But I would ask something from you first before I grant you this path. I'm all ears. I would see a better demonstration of betrayal from you than the paltry things the abbot has shown me. Show me you understand it. And the abbot's head will be yours for the taking. I'll see what I can do. Mm. It is a good day. 
So, while this is happening, and you kind of like, and you're sort of looking in the direction that um, that mask is looking, and you kind of hear the sounds like motors approaching. Ooh. Krista, you uh, are on your way over to presumably uh, Mother Superior? The, the Mother Superior vehicle? Is that where you were headed? Hal's vehicle? Uh, I was, yeah, I was, I was heading to Hal's vehicle. Alright. Um, I'm a little curious what this looks like. Do you, do, is there like a... Um, do you have your own vehicle or is there like a thing where you hop from one to the other? Or I, 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 was, I was curious how you get there. You're not moving hugely fast, so I mean, you could even just hop, to, maybe hop down a walk or something. And what does yeah, this look um, like? I don't know. The closest that I was trying to imagine this thing, and the closest that I could come to it, and I don't know what my size restrictions are, or like what we got going there, but um, it's gonna have to be pretty big if it's a garage. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's gotta, it's gotta have yeah. have a, a comfortable interior. So I was thinking some weird off-brand Russian version of those big mad cats or big cats or whatever they are. Oh, with like with like a Frankenstein of other vehicles creating the interior. Uh, is that big like, cat uh, truck? Yeah, I think it's called big cat. I was trying to Google it and I could not figure out. Biggest dump truck in the world, Caterpillar. Big <laughs> you cat know what? Truck? It might be. It might be something like that. Oh, nice. I like, I like the idea too of of all of us being able to drive up into the big crawler for protection. So yeah, that, yeah. You know, so that's that, like, probably a definitely a thing. That's probably a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. No. Absolutely. Um, cool. Oh goodness. I okay. So I've, I've just I've just found a picture on someone's Pinterest. Um, that I'm going to go ahead and see if I can. Dag it. Let me see if I can link. Find if I can find an actual link, without it. Here, I'm just gonna let me do this because I want to see if no curse you Pinterest. <laughs> I don't want to see nine million pictures. Okay, maybe later. I was gonna show it to you. I was gonna put a link in chat and stuff, but I'll do that later. Everyone, just Google big cat, big cat truck. You'll find it. Um. Anyway. Um. So. Uh. Krista, you're on your way there. Um, again, are you using like zip lines, or are you using, uh, <laughs> or is it like, are they, or are the vehicles moving slowly enough that you just hop down and you run to another one? Or I feel like since they're moving slowly enough, and like as long as you're careful, you can just kind of hop from vehicle to vehicle. Sure. Um, and like Krista, coming from. Um, where she's come from would be like able to skillfully just go from vehicle to vehicle um but yeah so that's that's what she's doing she's going there with only one dog all right so possessing but a single but a single hound at this time um Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Uh, I found one where it was actually next to a truck, and there was a uh, there was. I've just been shown a, an image. I'm going to share over here. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, there's a person for scale in there, so that helps. Um, but there was one that was actually next to like an actual like 18 wheeler, and it's like, oh my god. No. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so Krista, as you're heading that, uh, you're at, uh, roughly at this point. Um, it is, I'm going to say we're coming on toward, you will probably soon be stopping for the night, I think, probably, or, well, if, in as much as the vehicle does, occasion does do that. I figure the convoy does kind of do that. Um, that, uh. You look over and you, you sort of you hear it first. 
You're in the uh, you're in the pass right now. You've made it to the pass. And you see a bunch of see a, what, what a bunch of uh, vehicles, wide flat vehicles. That looks somewhat familiar to you. Um, and they also are armed to the teeth. That are coming up the other way through the pass. Now there's plenty of room. It's not like you're going to run into each other per se. But they are approaching. What would you like to do? Um, so, Krista carries a sniper rifle with her. She'll probably, like, stop moving and check the scope to see, to confirm that she does recognize these vehicles. These are the, are the vehicles of Dodd Company. Uh... <clears throat> you have spent quite some time with. <laughs> the, the, this is a, uh, a, a paramilitary gang that uh, hangs out at an old military base on the other side of the mountain. Um, and a place called the Arsenal. Um, she will continue to make her way to where she can see. Mm -hmm. uh, Hal and Barbello, at least. I, I will say the the only other piece of information I uh, the other piece of information I will give you is looking at it. They this is looking like this is a bit bigger than a raiding party. This is like a war party type deal. Krista's definitely going to check on Hal and Barbello then to make Excellent. sure that they're uh, well equipped for the possible situation. All right, so um, you head in, and uh, you, you head up to, to Mother Superior, you climb up the ladder, and you look inside, <laughs> and yeah, you see them, they're both like very, uh, they seem to be in their own worlds right now. <laughs> Barbella is just sort of standing at, at the the edge. She's she's staring into the syringe, and uh, Hal is just you know, sort of looking out a window. Krista stares for a little bit. She takes in a deep breath, puts down her dog because she was carrying her dog too. Um, it's a little Frenchy. And the friend, she just kind of waddles up to them and she like picks up a stick that she sees nearby and walks up to Hal. Pokes Hal with the stick and the friend, she stands in front of her belly and goes Patrick, <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, for a moment, Bar Barbella, the, uh, the, there are a couple of these plants that start going <laughs> and then you're like just quite suddenly, <laughs> and then you're looking down at this 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 uh, French French uh, poodle, is it? French, French bulldog that French has bulldog. like has like a armor vest on. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's really a real dog. <laughs> There's that thing that when you when you when you put your finger out, or it wants to like lick lick your finger. Yeah. Look over. Do I, do I see Krista? Do you, does he I mean, see Krista? <laughs> Have she, you made she's yourself poking Hal with a stick. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Am I waking up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're feeling. You're, you're hearing the, those vehicles are getting a little louder, and then something's poking you. Um, and uh, you look over and you see that it's. Uh, you, you see that you're being poked with a stick. Yeah, I just, I just, I snatch it up, and then it's like kind of like out of it, looking like at her and down at the stick, and I just like break it with my thumb and I drop it and look at her like what? You don't want to be touched so I figured I poke you with a stick. What the f... f who is... 
And I like look over to uh, uh, Barbello with a who's screwing the loop back on the file and sticking it in her coat. Do I see that? Do I you think want that. To? <laughs> um, she, you saw her put something in her coat. You're, you're. Uh, you, I, I don't know if you're completely mm -hmm. sure what it was. Uh, let me see. Um, <laughs> I think. Uh, I'm just trying to look if there's like a uh, if, if there's like a versus move here that we would want to go with. Oh, um, interesting. I think it could be it could be read a person and uh, and uh, Barbella could be trying to hinder. <laughs> I like okay. that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, since I haven't quite figured this out yet, I'm going to ask for the hinder roll first, um, until I, until I find out whether in this particular, because it's different from system to system, whether you do it before or after. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have, uh, Barbella do the interfere roll first. Interfere, um, is that, uh, Yeah, that's plus history, any history you have with, uh, Oh, right, Al. right, right. <laughs> Oof. Okay. So uh, that's uh, that's going to be uh, minus two um, that uh, Hal is going to get to his role. I don't even know. To if I can. read a person. I don't even know if I can do this. Uh, like, I, I, and I know totally that he doesn't, like, he's distracted by the machine. So I'm like, is that thing working okay? And I put it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm comically unobservant anyway. So this is, yeah. See ah, excellent. Woof. Woof. Uh, I think, yeah, he just kind of bewilderedly looks at her and is like, it's fine. Look, I, you're, you all, um, Mother Superior is always your home, but I'm, I'm sick or something, so you should probably give me some space. That, that's what I'm most worried about. You, you're very sick and you're in danger of dying. Yeah, which we're fixing. How? We're, we're gonna go do a thing for the iron douche bag and then we're going to go back and we're going to get an antidote and then we're going to burn the abbot to the ground brother brother i've seen things those those plants they don't listen to the abbot i don't like when you see things uh it looked like both of y'all were seeing things just saying yeah yeah, that's, that's definitely that moment where we're just about nose to nose at each other. We both like look over. <laughs> Chris, <that comes> up. <laughs> just um, not to disturb this beautiful, beautiful sibling moment. I love, I love when mm. Hallie and Barbie just kind of get together. It's great. Um, but uh, pop scops are coming. Uh, there's a lot of pop scops. Uh, <laughs> uh, we should probably go to Nandy and make sure that she's well like protected. All right. He just starts going around collecting all of the stuff back up to get geared back up. Do you want us to touch you with sticks? I don't want you to touch me at all. It doesn't but I mean, like, what if we what if we have to, like, get your attention? Uh, words. Dude. Take one I'm... of his tools. Well, like, I, I used one of his sticks and he broke it. All right, hot dotties on the horizon. Let's go. We're walking now. Oh, okay. Krista picks up her dog, Giant. Um. <laughs> heads out uh, to heads back over to the uh, for, okay. you know, to Nandy's yeah, so, place. So, um, Nandy, a um, couple things. Um, you are going to in. Not uh, fairly soon, I think. Yeah, I think this is... Yeah. Um, there is... Uh, I, I'm trying to... I'm, sorry, I'm having a little trouble visualizing here, right? Um, but uh, is, is the... So the bordello, I think, has... If someone wanted to come into the bordello, um, is there, like, a doorbell or something or do they just open a door and come in or uh... <laughs> bing bong 
um, the way I envisioned it is that, you know, my, my big cat uh, will have multiple containers on it that are kind of con uh, connected. And mm -hmm. that when, when we are setting down, we will um, connect multiple of these containers to create the bordello. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that, for example, like the bar would be one part, um, the, okay. the, um, the stage would be one part, and then, you know, where the people are sitting would be one part. So I'm thinking gotcha. you would not, would not really be able to get into the bordello. Okay. You, you might be able to, you know, enter through, through the vehicle to get to, you know. Which one do you typically, uh, uh, do you typically stay in again? Um, we we have we have um, one that that is uh, the, like my mine and Krista's living quarters and that little lounge. Um, so I'm guessing that's uh, that's where we would be. And so sort of the lounge know. area, okay. Yeah, and then the girls would have their own container where they're they're more like bunking, yeah. but uh, Gemma would have her own room. So okay. I, I would I would still be in the lounge, which I which I also kind of have like a desk in the corner. Okay. Which is why why I could like shoo everybody out because yeah. Actually, yeah, so I assume it's basically so you're in the sort of the back area, and then there you've got. I I assume you all have drivers who basically yeah. will, will drive your vehicles um, while you're not in them. Um, multiple ones. And uh, so you're going to. Um, so if someone wants to come into uh, your your. Your unit, I guess it's like, is there, there's like a just sort of, a, sort of a truck door type deal, I would guess, something along those lines. Yes, okay. and, and you wouldn't be able to get strictly into mine. I'm thinking that where Torque is staying, and um, I don't know, you know, probably some of the bar backs or whatever, mm -hmm. I still got the dudes who set it up so that you can't straight get to Mandy. Okay, um, so what's going to happen then is that you're in the lounge and uh, Torque will come in. Um, and he will say, he'll, he'll just, he'll just, um, Nandy, you have a visitor. All right, could you be more specific, Torque? What kind of visitor? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> he, he, he just sort of, um, uh, say, says, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's Polaris. Oh, then why didn't you say that? Please show her in, my love. Of course. And, uh, he goes over and, uh, See, basically, Polaris also had a guard, came with a guard, but, you know, that type of deal. They, you know, they, they kind of know that, that she's safe here. Um, Polaris will... Um, you see, she sort of comes in, and she says, Hey, um... You, you weren't at the... You weren't at the ceremony, and I think something happened. All right, and my love, tell me about it. There's a problem. All right, define problem. There's... It's where we're, uh... It's where we're headed. All right, La La Land. There's... The... I don't know exactly how to describe this, but I, when, I guess you would, she would refer to them as mom and dad. That would probably, we probably still have those relationships. Um, or father and mother. Father and mother, yeah. Might when, uh, sound a little more. Uh, when mother was talking to father, and they they argued, and but I could sense that father agreed very readily. There's. I can hear something. There's something I'm hearing through the ice. Is there a way I can help you to listen more closely? Maybe. I'm worried, though. There's something about... 
but you have to be careful. But they're going to I think Father wants something at the Sapien at, at town. The town. Yeah, at the town, at, at the village. They, he, there's something he he wants. And I don't know if everything's going to go Mother is sick and she won't tell me. She won't talk about it. You know, my love. Adults get scared too. Can I... I had to get away from... Can I try and... Can I try and see from here? Sure, and she kind of just like shows, shows her over to, you know, one of Polaris's, um, you know, preferred settees. It's all kind of plush sure. and kind of... Okay. So she sits down. Thank you. And she immediately, her eyes roll up. And she's gone. She's not here right now. Um, and Nanny just kind of covers her up with a little blankie and returns, you know, back to her desk. Because she knows this so might take a while. There are, uh, there are more visitors now uh, who are coming in through the, uh, through the outer area. Um, so, Krista, when you see... Um, when, when you and Hal and Barb come into the, uh, into the vehicle, um, you will see that... Um, that, uh, Torque is there, and, you know, he nods to you, and then, um, but you also see that, uh, one of, uh, uh, one of Prolaris's handlers is here, also, I'm just kind of hanging out. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, like, Krista just kind of looks at both of them, and then just, like, walks, like, I <laughs> that's her cell phone. I think every. I think pretty much it's a given that they that even with uh, Polaris that they kind of trust you folks. Um, so we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about posturing of, of anything like that. Um, well, it's not the I just feel like Chris is just that type of person though, where she's like. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know. Um, <laughs> just like kind of like. That, yeah. Waltzes in, looks at Nandy with a huge smile, and goes. Hallie's here. <laughs> oh, welcome, friend. Welcome. Is there anything I can help you with, Krista? Oh. Uh, Bar Barbie's here too. Um, come on in, my loves. Yeah. I saw I saw some vehicles outside that look a lot like my dad's vehicles, but a lot mm -hmm. of them. Oh, what's your daddy doing here? Maybe he misses me. I don't know. And he would come with with uh, a war party for you. Maybe there's just a lot of dogs. And then she kind of turns around and says, "Well, my hell, how are you feeling, love?" Not great, Andy. It's um, yeah. yeah. Under the weather. I will say you can hear the convoy kind of pass the the other convoy sort of passing by the the trucks, or okay, you're kind of in the same area now, and it's like they're they're sort of passing each other. Sorry, go ahead. I oh. need to go. I need to go see what's going on here. Yeah, they're they're, they're not coming close. They're just. Sorry, oh. go ahead. Maybe they're heading for the Iron Dew ship. Ah, oh, to be honest, you know they can take take us ass out. I don't really care. Uh, how well, are you doing? We you know we need an uh, Iron Abbot. Um, it's making a uh, 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 sorry, the words um, antidote Antido. for us. Yeah, thank you, antidote. Yeah. Alright, so uh, did I did what was I managed to learn anything about about that leaf? I don't know if there's there's a knowledge roll or something like this. What, in uh, what now? Remind me of the of this leaf. Uh, what this leaf was? She I got remember it from you... the greenhouse, but not from like the actual side room. Oh, so okay. I yeah. Don't, I don't know. Um. So yeah, you. Uh, let me go ahead and. She got stuck to her shoe when she left and snuck okay. in. Okay. Um. And I put see. her on the spot, so. You could. Let's see. Uh. I don't think we're trying to seduce or manipulate the leaf. We're not trying to uh, 
Sort of trying to read the leaf, perhaps. Yes. It'd be um, interesting, but... So, um, although, oh, read a situation is still the, the, the questions for that are... I mean, yeah, yeah, I can see that's the closest one uh, that I think we could bend in this direction. Um, so, so, sharp? Yeah, roll plus sharp. Oh, that's one of my highlighted ones, too. So. Ah! XP! Uh, okay, so now it says forward help interference, but it's zero, right? Because it already adds the... So you, uh, well, yeah, yeah, it's it's zero because you yeah, it already it already adds its own thing in. There, there are no modifiers uh, here. You got an eleven. Mark experience. All right. All right. Um, so you you can get three of these questions if you like. Um, 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 um. What? Which page we're on? Uh, this is the uh, basic moves. Uh, you might have the. Um, I think I sent that out. Yes, I'm, I, I got the rules right here. I'm just world harm rules. Um, let me go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and repost it in the chat here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Basic moves. Read a sitch. Read a sitch. Um, what should I be on the lookout for? All right. Um, was there anything in particular, by the way, you were? Was there anything in particular you were looking for when yes, you were trying just to, to analyze see. this leaf? Yeah, to see if I know what it is and, and to see if I know how to counter it. Gotcha. Okay. Um, just, just to yeah, there is maybe, a, uh, is, is it actually poisonous? What kind this of poison? Leaf is, this leaf is not um, mm -hmm. because it's from the outer uh, area. Um, but... Uh, something that you, you, you do realize as you're kind of uh, analyzing it um, is that this, uh, this plant was basically... This plant was basically um, made to grow using the energies of the maelstrom. Um, there is... It seems like there. It seems like some kind of the, the, the nor, plants. The few you've seen or read about, but I mean, you're you you've I mean, the ones that you've seen. You 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 know how plants work. You harvest and use them. Um. This plant should not quite look like this. Um. It it there's nothing unhealthy about the plant per se. The plant's fine. Um, but it's like it's kind of on some level in as much as a plant can be, um, been grown in pain. The, uh, so what you would be, uh, be on the lookout for is basically Shh. a um, <laughs> something that can brute force the maelstrom or the energies thereof. Ah! Oh, hey. <laughs> Hello. Hello, kitty. Ashton's being loud. Oh. So that's what you should be on the lookout for. All right, so um, now the first one is like, what's my best way past, which I would say, what is the, what would be the best way to negate, if, if, I, if I can tell, you know, which way to negate the F. F yeah, the best way past the thing that created this plant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to... Uh, well, there are other things that... Uh, well, they told you... There are probably other... If it's a device... Or... A person, just something that can counteract it. Um, if it is a device, then it can be... Uh, you can find a way either through a person or another device to create feedback. So... Basically, I, I can see that I cannot circumvent the 
the plan in natural ways. Because that's maybe. That's maybe. Um, there may be folks at this at Sapien Town that know how to do it. Um, Chalala land. But uh, it's it would require someone who's I, I, someone. <laughs> it, it, you, you could do it unnaturally, or someone who is very attuned to the maelstrom could perhaps do it. But it would probably be uh, quite an undertaking. And um, then as the, you said three, right? Mm-hmm. All right. And as the last one, um, I would probably see, um, it's like, what's the, the biggest threat here to the people infected? Like the progress of, if I can, if I can tell. Is the biggest threat. Yeah, it, is it like the biggest threat? Is it like paralyzing? Is it like poisoning? Is it like losing um, your brain, bleeding out of your eyes, liquefying inner organs, whatever? Well, this plant is not going to tell you that um, because this is a different plant. But um, what you are able to sort of determine is that... Um, Basically, anything that uh, anything that can that can cause this to happen, um, is I, I mean the, the the abbot's going to be a pretty big is going to be a very big threat because apparently he can make this happen, um, but. Then also, just from what, well, actually, I know exactly how I'm going to answer your question. I, I will say, just from what um, uh, Polaris has said thus far, there may be something that the Patriarch uh, is, uh, is, is planning that might be counter to the interests of Everyone getting better? Maybe not directly, but there's something going on there. And then, I think everyone will see who's, who's sort of hanging out here right now. As you hear these engines, you're getting ready to go and check out what's going on outside. I think Polaris's eyes fly open. And you hear her say, He's going to. He's going to seize the. Father, father is going to seize the beacon. And. But, what. What is that? There's a, and she's sort of looking in the direction outside. I saw them, she says, pointing in the direction of outside. In the direction of the of the other convoy, and she says, "They're going to destroy the abbey." And I think that is where we're going to leave off. <laughs> Fuck. For uh, this week. <laughs> well, that's a pickle. Oh my gosh! Holy crap! Go we'll destroy your antidote. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> I need them to not do that thing. Right. <laughs> Sounds like a Krista problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, thank you very much for playing. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, as we're, we're getting into our, our little mini campaign here, I am excited to see what's going to happen. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, let's and uh, do our outros. To uh, and, and we're going to go around, and folks will uh, say, feel free to say, you know, where folks can find you online. Or, and uh, any any fi any thoughts you had about this session or favorite moments or anything like that. And I am going to start with Vivesha. Well, all right. I'm Vivesha. This is what you can find me under on Twitch. On the Twitter, you can find me as uh, Miss Vivesha with uh, the randomness that is my brain. Um, here on Twitch, I stream a variety of things. I haunt Jim's channel as often as I can. Um, and right now, every second Tuesday, uh, I am on Uncanny Adventures, where we are playing a Wild West version of Call of Cthulhu, which is why I double-booked myself. 
<laughs> and I, I would definitely say, you know, I might have missed some of it, but Taco Smooches is right up there for me. Somebody got to clip that. There's just no way. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, let us move things around to Kurt. I am Kurt Jackson. I'm on Twitter as Captain Kurt Jack, and uh, I this is kind of my first foray back into doing uh, online gaming stuff, and I'm super excited. I love it. I really love, um, like, there is a level of isolation that happens when you are sitting in your own room and there's there the distractions are much less and there's a chance for your brain to mind walk a lot more than i think a face-to-face -face game can do so i i'm really glad to be back in the middle of this it's great yay awesome awesome and uh seth hi i'm seth david andrew hubbard uh you can find me on twitter loitering and being mean uh on that uh twitter.com slash a sender that's uh underscore sender uh i just want to say uh there was a lot of points that i really enjoyed about this i did not expect to go as to get as into it as i was i was like lost for a little bit and, and like my favorite part this is kind of weird but describing them in the psychic maelstrom and like Krista seeing them from the outside, almost like these weird like drug addicts just staring at windows, was so dark and weird and interesting. I thought that was a really cool angle, so I really enjoyed that part. Yeah. Yay! Very cool. Awesome to have you with us. Awesome. Um, and uh, finally, over to Michi. Hello, I'm Michi, also known as Witty Michi, which you will find as my Twitter handle and also my Twitch handle. Um, I stream a variety of games. Most of the time it's League of Legends or Team Bay Tactics, just uh, and it depends on my mood. Uh, my favorite moment of this stream is definitely when Crystal walked in and they're like maelstromed out and uh, <laughs> the decision to uh, poke Hal with a stick and like it, uh, I'm like I'm just picturing this little like French bulldog just kind of waddle its way over and like. French bulldogs don't have a specific bark. They have like this like weird whale oh, sound. Yeah. And that's why I was like, it sounds like because it sounds like they're trying to talk to you and you have no idea what's happening. So like, I feel like that was probably my favorite thing like because this picture is little dog. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, very cool. Well, um, I am I am excited uh, to to uh, see what we're uh, what we what we do next week because uh, this is clearly stuff is happening, um, and uh, just want to see how, kind of where the ride this to ride this thing to the end. Well, once again, I'm Jim Ryan. Uh, you can find me at Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is Jim Yes That Jim .com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I've got links down below to my website, Twitter, and YouTube channel. Uh, also, some of my fiction and some games I've been working on and posting on Itch, along with links to game signups and applications to join our Discord. Um, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, we uh, continue our masks campaign. Doctropolis, uh, that mole has been running rather masterfully. Um, on Saturday nights here, we have our Invisible Sun campaign. Um, I believe we're having another guest this weekend. i got to confirm with them. Um, but uh, I think they're going to be there for that game. Um, on Sundays, we have one-shots in the afternoon. Um, this Sunday, provided I can get everything together, um, we're going to have a one-shot of Shotguns and Sorcery. That is a cipher system game uh, that is a fantasy noir, um, and I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, then Sunday evenings, uh, uh, normally we do also have a, uh, a dark matter campaign, uh, Ghosts of Salt Mall. We've adapted Ghosts of Salt Marsh and uh, put it in space, um, and that is much fun. And uh, then, of course, Tuesday, back around to this, where we will have our uh, technically third episode. <laughs> Second RP episode of Apocalypse World. Uh, Sign-ups also are open right now still for uh, Medical Bay 3, which is the one shot we're going to be running toward the end of this, uh, this month. Um, that is a science fiction medical drama. It's on an, uh, basically you're a human on an alien, uh, alien uh, uh, 
starbase of a sort, and uh, you gotta deal with uh, alien patients. That's uh, that's the game. Uh, so if there's any interest in that, uh, you can go down below, click on RPG sign up, or uh, go to jimmyesthatgym.com and click on game sign up. As always, beginners are welcome. Well, when we hit the end card, I shall send a raid over to, let's see, he says, staring at the, the, the many possible choices of places to raid. Um, I think I shall go over to, uh, let's see, I, I will, I will raid, I will raid Lindy. We will raid Lindy tonight. Um, laugh, love Lindy. Uh, she's, she's doing Ravenloft. Um, and has the whole cast there right now. They're very all very entertaining, so we're going to go say hi to them. If you are so inclined, feel free to say to hang on and say hi to them with us. That again will be when we hit the end card. In the meantime, folks, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you next week. Farewell. <laughs>